And Zedekiah the king said unto Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews that are fallen to the Chaldeans, lest they deliver me into their hand, and they mock me. But Jeremiah said, They shall not deliver thee. Obey, I beseech thee, the voice of the Lord, which I speak unto thee, so it shall be well unto thee, and thy soul shall live. But if thou refuse to go forth, this is the word that the Lord has shewed me. And behold, all the women that are left in the king of Judah's house shall be brought forth to the king of Babylon's princes. And those women shall say, Thy friends have set thee on, and have prevailed against thee. Thy feet are sunk in the mire, and they are turned away back. So they shall bring out all thy wives and thy children to the Chaldeans, and thou shalt not escape out of their hand, but shall be taken by the hand of the king of Babylon, and thou shalt cause the city to be burned with fire. Then said Zedekiah unto Jeremiah, Let no man know of these words, and thou shalt not die. But if the princes hear that I have talked with thee, and they come unto thee, and say unto thee, Declare unto us now what thou hast said unto the king, Hide it not from us, and we will not put thee to death. Also what the king said unto thee, Then thou shalt say unto them, I presented my supplication before the king, that he would not cause me to return to Jonathan's house to die there. Then came all the princes unto Jeremiah, and asked him, and he told them according to all these words that the king had commanded. So they left off speaking with him, for the matter was not perceived. So Jeremiah abode in the court of the prison until the day that Jerusalem was taken, and he was there when Jerusalem was taken. Uh, yes, I, and that's something to think about, folk. Whenever you God gives you a word, and you don't give it to God's people, for that's why he give you the word was to give to God's people. Praise His holy name. I'm not a saying only in prophecy and tongues and interpretation, but I'm a saying in a word of knowledge. There's some of you that listen to me, I know that don't understand what tongues and interpretations are. Some of you don't are gone so far that you don't even believe it's for today. But okay, but if you get a word of knowledge and you don't give it, if God gives you that word, he wants you to give it. That's what he wants it for, because he has spoken to you in his still, small voice. Then you give the word on to someone else. I'm talking about the king here this afternoon, King Zedekiah. He had an unfinished task, and he never did finish the task. And I want to hear Sister Ned and Brother Tom sing again about the unfinished task. Brother Tom. This song is entitled An Unfinished Task. If I carry the gospel to the lost near and far I will stand empty-handed at God's judgment bar but I do Say 
Have you left behind you an unfinished task? Are you still traveling on with the Lord? Hallelujah. That you started the race and you're still in it. Glory be to God that the devil can't come along and turn you back because that you are sold out to God. Oh, I thank God that you folk up that listen are sold out to him. Yes, I know this is not the only program that you listen to in the day. I know that, but thank God that you do listen to it. Hallelujah, that there's others that's in this work together. There we're all working together, and we're hoping not to leave behind us an unfinished task. That when the Savior calls us over on the other side, that we he can say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And he's going to say that to you too, dear one, the one who tries to live, who tries to live for him from day to day. Remember, we are all kings and priests unto God. Those of us who are living the life, uh, we're preaching daily. We're preaching every day. Uh, if the uh, life that we live is a preaching for Jesus, uh, and I want to live for him, and I know that you do too, uh, and that's why that I take great pleasure in bringing forth a message uh, upon the Sabbath afternoon. God is still on the throne, and I'm glad he is, and I'm glad he still looks down upon his people, and I know that whenever we're in trouble, so is God. God can't rest when he sees us in pain. He can't rest when he sees us in trouble. Uh, praise God, and he wants us to move along in the realm of the Lord Jesus Christ in the person of the Spirit. Uh, hallelujah. Now, uh, I want to get back to this message here uh, that we read a while ago. And they said, then said, the 24th verse, then said Zedekiah unto Jeremiah, let no man know of these words, and thou shalt not die. Oh, that's something I don't think much of, folks. Uh, I don't think that that should be when God gives us something to tell somebody else. Uh, when He gives us something to tell His people uh, that we don't have to, we don't have to hold it back, uh, but we are able to turn it loose. Uh, oh, that we can live that life ourselves. Uh, glory be to God. You know, God had told them back there in the days of Isaiah, when he sent Isaiah into Hezekiah and said to Hezekiah, because you showed uh, the Babylonians uh, everything that you've got in your house, uh, they are going to come someday and take it from your posterity. They're going to take it from your children in that day. Uh, and Hezekiah said, oh, well, all he could say was, thank God that it's not going to be in my day. But we sometimes make mistakes uh, and we don't correct them. Is that right? Can you say amen? 
Yes, just say amen, hallelujah, that uh, we can correct our mistakes, uh, but sometimes they are written in indelible ink, uh, and we can't erase them, even though we do get forgiveness of them. Uh, and oh, uh, yes, uh, the day come on down. I want to just go into that sermon just for a, a few uh, seconds here, about 30 seconds, uh, that Hezekiah had his life prolonged, uh, and I don't know where it was good or not. Uh, there was several mistakes that he had made in that time, uh, and that was one of them to show the Babylonians uh, what uh, he had in his house. Uh, and another one was uh, in that 15-year span that Manasseh was born, and Manasseh was a king that God really judged Israel for. Uh, he judged, I mean Judea for, he really judged them because he said it was Manasseh's sins, uh, and that that was terrible. Uh, he said that uh, Mana because of Manasseh's sin, uh, that Judah would be punished uh, and those sins must be brought into account uh, and the day was a coming uh, it was approaching now as we come up to our thought for today uh, that Manasseh's sins uh, was begin to look out like a sore thumb. Uh, they were standing right out in the front. Uh, and <clears throat> I know that Manasseh's grandson, Josiah, when he was king, and he had the church, uh, they had the temple cleansed, uh, and they found the book of the law, the book of Moses, uh, and they began to, to read how the, far they come short uh, of Moses' creed, uh, and how far they were short that day, and what God would do, uh, that Josiah, he rent his clothes, and he began to pray, and he began to seek God, and God gave mercy unto him, because that he sought God, and God told him, he said, well, it's a coming, God's word is sure, and it sometimes moves slow, and I think the way that we are doing in America today, and if you want to know how what I think, how far we are coming short, I'm going to say this, I'm not going to preach it, because I was told not to, and uh, <clears throat> I think we've got one of the best radio stations that there is around here in Jerseyville here, but you read the first chapter of Romans, read it all the way through, and read it slow and good, and you can see how far America is beginning to come short of God. You can see it yourself. Uh, folks, uh, it's something to think about. Uh, God overthrew one country on that account. He overthrew some before. And listen here. Let us be like Josiah. Let us rent our clothes. Uh, let us pray and seek God. Uh, and when he did the, the word come back to the prophet, to Josiah, and said, It's going to happen. God's word is true. Uh, God's word does not uh, lack power. It won't return to him void. Uh, but because you've repented, it won't be in your day. Uh, oh, listen, folk. Uh, let us pray that God can get America back to where it was back in the days when the pilgrims and the puritans come over, when Oglethorpe come over, when Roger um, Williams come over, when William Penn come over, let us get back to that day, can we, when they wanted to worship God in spirit and in truth and without fear. Oh, I thank God that he has got some men yet today that will stand up and will blazingly cry out, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, Zedekiah, he listened to, to the word of Jeremiah, but that's all that he did do. He didn't object to it, but he just didn't, well, he didn't follow it. That's all. He didn't let it sink down in his heart. He got it in his head. He got head religion. He had the knowledge there of black and white on paper. He had that, but he didn't let it get down to his heart. Zedekiah said, I'm afraid the way that I've led God's people, and I've told them the things and that everything was fine and dandy. Everything was just out in the open, that the state was in good shape. I've told them that, and now they've been, some of them carried away captive uh, and I want to bring that out to you that you may be a living for God but if whenever we lose our freedom and I'm talking about spiritual freedom it may be the people that serve God may lose theirs too uh, remember uh, only uh, Ezekiel and 
Daniel, uh, they were carried away captive, uh, even though uh, that they were religious, even though they were God people and serving God with all their might, uh, they were still carried away captive. Uh, but Zedekiah, he wasn't going to go too far. He wasn't going to follow God's word. Uh, he was going to be more of a spectator than he was to be a participator. That was what old Zedekiah was a thinking of. And I'm a thinking about how that he would not have the courage. Zedekiah didn't have the courage to avoid a disaster. He said, they're going to make fun of me. He gave old uh, Jeremiah the instructions of, of how to work his way out of it uh, and not tell anybody. Jeremiah would be telling a lie. It's the only lie that I saw in the whole outfit, in his whole book uh, from beginning to end, was only the one lie. But I sometimes wonder if that would have changed the course. Uh, there's times when them, the pastor and the deacons can't get along uh, and the deacon is telling the pastor it's time for you to get out and go on go somewhere else. But when the deacon and the pastor can't get along, then we have trouble in the church. I realize that we have a, we have a grudge spirit there, and it's hard to see souls saved. I mean, the, oh, they'll come to the altar, maybe, but I'm talking having their name placed on the land book of life. Uh, he just did, he said, keep it quiet. Uh, don't let this letter, don't let this <clears throat> message get out to anybody else. Uh, keep it unto yourself, uh, uh, Jeremiah, because I don't want the deacon board, I don't want the trustees, I don't want the, the elders of the church to hear anything about it. Uh, I don't want them to know that I've made a mistake so far and I'm going to ride this thing till it leaves the rail. He wouldn't turn loose. Uh, he wouldn't turn loose. He wouldn't back up and say, Oh, yes, I've made a mistake. He wouldn't do that. He might have saved Jerusalem from being burned with fire if he had just admitted that he made a mistake. Did you ever make one? I have. And I had Brother uh, Shipley to preach in our church one night, and when he did, he dumped a whole load of Babylonian garments right off into my lap, uh, and he sent me a kite and going off and making things right. Uh, oh, yes, when he preached, then God magnified it. God showed me that it was wrong, things that I had to go make a, a, amends for. Yes, we make mistakes. Preachers make mistakes too sometimes, and they've got to go and make it right. Uh, do you believe that? Well, I can tell you it's a fact. Don't try to keep it quiet. I don't like to see preachers and, and elders of the church trying to keep things quiet uh, on their doctrine, what the doctrine is that they're believing. But let everybody know uh, what's going on. There was uh, Zedekiah trying to keep everything quiet. Uh, we have some organizations today that will send a letter to their pastor and to their ordained ministers tell them what the organization is believing what they're turning thumbs down on and what they're accepting them they do that uh, and they uh, let the other the congregation out in the dark leave them in the dark but that wasn't what Paul said when he wrote to the Thessalonians in first Thessalonians 5 and 27 he says cause this letter to be read to the entire population of the church let the whole church know what's going on and that's the way that I feel. Don't let somebody just take it to themselves and say, here, we're going to do it this way, and it's going to have to be done that way. No, I don't want that. I want to see the whole congregation know what they are praying for. Zedekiah was afraid, but you, uh, I like to think of about old uh, Daniel and them, how Daniel uh, read out the, the writing to Belshazzar, how he told Nebuchadnezzar about the tree, about the the judgment that was fallen upon each one of them, but the each one rewarded Daniel. And I believe uh, that old uh, Jeremiah might have been able to tell the the deacon board or to tell the princes whatever you want to say that what was going to happen. And I believe it may have done some good if he had. If I'm not going to say what was down the other fork of the road, for that's one thing that we don't know. But I know one thing, that one prophecy said to Zedekiah that he would not see uh, Babylon. And another one said he would be carried to Babylon. But 
how would that to come out and not contradict each other because the last thing that he saw was his two sons uh, slain right between his uh, before his eyes uh, oh that must have been an awful sight to see your own family slain right in front of your eyes and to know that it was done because that you wouldn't listen to the word of god oh to think if my son or my children or somebody in the church was to be hurt. Somebody in the church would backslide in our church up there at Walkerville because I said something and I made a mistake when I said it and I wouldn't go back and rectify it. That I wouldn't admit that I made a mistake. If old Zedekiah could have recognized that he made a mistake, told everyone that he did, uh, then I believe that his son would have lived and his eyes would not have been put out. Uh, oh, my God, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, when we get the word that we can put the word out, the word that God wants us to put out. Uh, don't let us be like uh, Zedekiah. Don't let us be afraid that those who have already backslid, those who have already left the church, uh, that they'll point a finger at us when we tell everybody that we was wrong. It wasn't them, but it was we. It was a minister. It was Brother Williams that was wrong or some other pastor that was wrong. Don't be afraid, but go out and admit your mistake because I know that I am human yet and that I am subject to mistake if I don't follow the Lord hand in hand all the way. Yes, that was the last thing he saw was his sons annihilated. Then his eyes was put out. That was because that he could not accept Accept the word of God. Oh, yes, I've seen them leave the church because they couldn't stand sound doctrine. I have seen that. But, Lord, I don't want somebody to leave our church at Walkerville because that I said something then it was wrong. And I don't want somebody to be offended in the, on this program, on this radio program, because I said the wrong thing. Now, I know that I have a doctrine, and I know that you know what it is uh, as far as that's concerned. But I'm going to try to preach the Word of God the best that I know. I know I was sitting in a church one night, and the church was just ready to split. Now, I'm talking to Pentecost right now. And the church was ready to split wide open. And there was a message in tongues come. And I thought that that was going to seal it together because I had felt the Spirit before that. And then after the, the interpretation come, the Spirit of God fled. And my wife told me, says, I don't know what it was about, but said, I know that that was the wrong interpretation. And the church did uh, fold up. That is, they did split. There's some went this way and some stayed and some went another way and what have you. And I went to the pastor's wife and she had given many messages. And I said, did you get the interpretation of that message? And she said, yes, I did. <clears throat> I said, it wasn't the one that was given then, was it? She says, no. And I said, why didn't you give the right one? She said, because I've given given it before and it every word come back and hit me right in the face again people would not accept it god don't always say that i've been walking up and down the avenues of your heart trying to do you good trying to do something better for you that's what he wants us to do better but he wants us to clean up also oh hallelujah i know that this is not a shouting message but folks let us get on the right line i've just had an experience this past week Week that has shook me to my heels. I didn't know that we were getting that far away from God. That's why I asked you to read the first chapter of Romans and you preach it yourself. And that way I don't have to preach it over the air. I know that I've had to myself uh, some things to happen and I've let God down too. There was a message coming tongues one time in the church and I know that the, the pastor, he always interpreted his wife's message, but that time he did didn't get it and I did and I held back on it because I knew what it was about it was about communion and the reason why that I didn't give it was because my mother was sitting in the congregation and I knew that she didn't go for communion uh, that she wasn't much in the communion service uh, that she kindly frowned on it uh, and I knew that and that if I would give the message uh, there and interpret the message that she would say that I did it because I knew that she didn't approve of it but after the service was very near over over, and the pastor asked me, says, is there anything that you want to say? And I told him, yes, that message has come from heaven. 
and it was on communion. And then one of the sisters got up and said, that's the reason why I didn't come to the New Year's watch party. That's the reason why I didn't come to New Year's Eve service. It's because I didn't want to partake in communion. Listen, folks. God knows what he's doing, and he'll give us what he wants us to say. And, he, and to those of you who don't believe in tongues and interpretation, he will give you a word of knowledge, maybe. He will give you discernment, maybe. I'm not a saying what he will do, I can't say. But if he does give you something, he's a giving it to you because he wants you to turn it loose. Father in heaven, we're thankful, God, that we've had the privilege of bringing this message forth to your people. Lord, <clears throat> that we can all enjoy it. Lord, that we can all pray for one another. God, thou knowest those that need help. Lord, who have listened to the radio. God, may they lay their hands upon the radio right now and receive a charge from heaven above. Oh, that someone can be healed. That someone can see one of their loved ones coming to God. That they can pray and see that son, that daughter being saved. That they can see that spouse being and fill with the Spirit of... Oh, God, we pray for these in the sweet and lovable name of Jesus and for His glory. Amen and amen. And until this time, next Sabbath afternoon, this is Evangelist Garland William returning you to your announcer. ...power unlimited. For a complete...